My name is Johannes. I'm one of the founders of Serene. And as you can imagine, as a founder, I've been contributing to nearly all areas within the company. But today I focus on the product and I make sure that the product is always 100% of what our customers need. With our software analytics product, we are addressing a highly dynamic market. In times of digitalization, nearly every industry is experiencing a, a groundbreaking disruption, which means that the internal IT organizations of those companies, they are transforming into new structures, new processes, agile, they become agile delivery machines, right? For my role in, in Serene, it's very important that I gather a very deep understanding about how software development is being done today, but also uh, to observe the trends and to anticipate how software development will be done in five or 10 years from now. And for this, I'm in constant exchange with our customers and also with the experts in the field. So with that kind of knowledge, I can define the product vision and the strategy so that the product is is creating maximum value for the, comp the traditional companies today, which still have their old IT department structures, but also for the companies which, are, which were born digitally and already operate highly, highly dynamic, like, like companies like Netflix or, or Spotify, right? And maybe the most important thing for the product is also to be the, the companion, to be the navigation guide for companies so that they can master their digital journey. So the, the big difference between software engineering and traditional engineering disciplines is that it's about software, which means it's about a highly abstract material, right? Software has no tangible form, right? Yes, sure, you could print out, for example, the, the core system of a bank, print out the source code, but you would just have a paper staple of like, like uh, a huge paper staple, like 16 floor skyscraper high, and no human being has the time nor the, the cognitive uh, capabilities to read all this and to understand all this. So, so this is one of the challenges. But there's more that software is not static. Source code, software is never finished, right? So the, the source code is evolving every day. You have usually tens or sometimes hundreds of developers who do the changes in the source code. And so being responsible for an organization who does that software development, but without any means to really see what's going on, this is a, a super big challenge. And yeah, if you look at the newspapers, it's no wonder that every day you, you see some headlines where again, a software system uh, or a software project has been failed or running late, or there was a software defect in some systems and some, some huge um, business damage has occurred. Yes, that's true. There are thousands of tools out there. But if you look closely, every of those tools is highly specialized. For example, for developers, for testers, for, for the stakeholders involved in the overall development. And each of these tools is just helping um, the stakeholders to execute one single step of the overall process, right? So. Um, the challenge is, and there's no tool out there today, the challenge is to see what's going on across the entire process from the beginning where it's about uh, defining requirements, defining what shall be built, then the next phase where it's about planning um, and then the actual coding work where the developers take the requirements and convert it into code. Then uh, the phase about creating release candidates, testing them so that nothing breaks and finally, that the release is then shipped to the, to the users so that they finally get the software innovation. And today, there's no means to see what's going on from beginning to end. And, and this is the big problem. In the manufacturing industry, for example, 
we had this revolution around 1980 something when Toyota was the first car manufacturer who was really systematically tracking the process from A to Z, from beginning to end, right? And with this, they could boost the productivity and the efficiency of the, of the process dramatically, right? And how they did it was they identified in the process what they called waste, so loss of time and money, so that they can, could incrementally optimizing everywhere. They coined the term lean management for that. And Serene Analytics is essentially taking these ideas but bringing this to software engineering and making it possible that you can optimize your software engineering, your software delivery organization the same way. So let's, let's have a look at what a software development organization is about in its core. This organization gets money from the customer. Customer is usually um, the business department within the same enterprise and they want to have new features being added to the software that they use so that they can run and execute their business in a better way, right? And the aim of the software development organization now is to take each euro each dollar that they get and convert it 100% into software innovation, into innovation in, in a new release that they ship them to the users. And what you usually find is that from these 100 cents of the euro or dollar, only a small fraction can be used for innovation. Most of this is burned by these waste factors. So if you, if you look at the process from input to output, input would be the, the money that you, that you have with which you buy developers time. Could be that you have the need to pay salaries to your own developers or that you have a budget that you give to external third party vendors, right? Then you have developer time. And this time should be then converted into uh, value creating features of the software. And in between, you have multiple places where there's waste, where there's inefficiencies. For example, if there are defects being shipped in the last release, right? Now the developers need to spend their precious time to get the defects out of the system, right? Time is burned, less time for innovation. Or um, another source of waste is um, this this term technical debt, maybe you've heard about this. Technical debt is essentially a, a very complicated um, concept, but in simple words, it means um, code that is difficult to understand for developers, which means if developers have to work in that code, they are slow, they lose their time, and it's very likely that they make mistakes, creating defects, right? And usually, uh, technical depth is being created if developers have to work in high project pressure where they don't get the time from their managers to do it right. So over time, technical depth is accumulating in the system, in the code. And then now, now the waste part comes, right? If developers have to dig, have to work in all technical depth areas, they are slow, they do mistakes. This is waste, right? And the third aspect of waste is the technical debt itself. If it has become so bad that even the business side, the customer, gets frustrated because everything is so slow, right? Uh, things are not delivered as promised, not in time. Then the organization needs to take usually a big amount of time invest to remove the technical debt out of the systems. And again, time invest not created for innovation, but for yeah, just restructuring the, the internal code structures, right? So a, a fourth source of waste in the process is, has to do with knowledge distribution, it has to do um, again about code and, and human brains. So imagine if there's a complex place in the code base and there's only a single developer who knows about this, who, who always is the one who works there, right? So if this developer gets sick, two or three weeks, not at work. 
the whole project stands still. Or even, even worse, if, the, if this developer leaves the company, other developers have to do the work, but they are super slow, right? Really unproductive. And yeah, you should know about your knowledge monopolies, your knowledge distribution in the system to, to, to not run into these wasteful situations. So the Serene Analytics platform allows you to quantify, to measure and to quantify all these aspects, all this, what creates waste, right? This way you have, you, you can from a management level, you, you see what's going on, you have a means to monitor, see the trends, but also you can actively steer your organization towards a better situation. But the power of this analytics approach is even stronger. Why? Because it also allows you to track down to the root cause of the problem. For example, uh, take the effort that is burned because of defect fixing. Serene Analytics shows you where in the code base uh, it comes from. Which code units are the ones where, de where defects are coming in all day, right? And where the developers need to fix and, and, and fix it and, and spend the time. So with that kind of knowledge, it's highly actionable because you, you see, you can work like a, like a surgeon. You, you just pick this handful of bad places and fix it. So with this additional developer time that you now ha have for that, that is um, somehow extra power that you can spend to create more value to your customers, to your business, right? With the same, same amount of money with the same budget of your organization, actually with less budget. So you, you save costs and you deliver more. And what we see in the market with the data that is flowing through our analytics platform, we see that it's easily possible to, yeah, to, to, to get this, an extra power of more than 30% of your IT budget, which is huge.